What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Little Root Laddering. Uh, this week, we are officially diving in on the ladder for Series 7. I know Carl played last week with the super sweet rain team that he had been working on for, for Series 7 uh, on the casual ladder, but today is November 1st when I'm recording this, so the ladder for Series 7 is officially online. And we're going to jump right in with this team that uh, my buddy Casey, also known as Slacking on Discord, uh, has sent in to us. So um, we kind of talked about this on the podcast, which comes out Monday. So make sure you go and check it out for a more in-depth uh, explanation of what's going on. Simply put, we have Trick Room with Orangaroo, Reggie Rock, Torkoal. Uh, we have Weakness Palsy, Dragonite, Reggie Eleki, which this is going to be the first time I get to play with it and see how, how sweet it is. Uh, taking a more supportive role here with Double Screens and Thunder Wave. And then, because we have Torkoal, we might as well have a Sun Abuser, so we have Venusaur. So, really interested to see how this works. Um, I've played officially zero games with anything in Series 7, so this is going to be the entire basis I have for the format. Um, I have... I've watched a lot of stuff, but with everything with work and everything else, I have not actually had a chance to play. So let's uh, let's get right to it, shall we? Let's just jump right in, figure out how everything works, and that's not what I want. That's the one we want. That looks more like a Series 7 team. I'm excited. This is going to be a lot of fun. has a lot of mods that I uh, really want to play with. Really interested in seeing how powerful Reggie Eleki actually is. So, first team we see Tapu Finny, uh, Incineroar, Metagross, Cresselia, Rhyperior, and Raikou. This is sweet. I am so excited for this. I have no idea what to do. <laughs> so, I don't know if I want to bring Trick Room here. Just because Rhyperior probably beats our Trick Room. So what do we... This is Clear Buddy, right? Not Sturdy. Okay, that's really good for us. I kind of like Venu. I like Sun. And then I'm thinking... Regirock, Tord... Do I want Reggie Eleki or Dragonite in the back? Dragonite lines up pretty well. But we get... I'm gonna bring the Reggie Eleki. I think we need a counter for... For... Uh, for Finny. And I mean, obviously, Venusaur does that quite well, but I also just want to play with all the new stuff. We kind of talked about it on the podcast, but everyone is uh, just kind of wanting to play with the new toys, and our opponent here is no exception, uh, bringing, what, four new mons? Four new mons to the game? Cresselia and Cinnoror. I wonder if they just set up Trick Room here. More importantly, do I care? So, abilities are all going to happen here at the beginning. I am thinking... I want to click Protect, and... I kind of want to just get Vine Lash going on the crest. I could also... We could also double into Venu, into Incin, but I don't think that's going to be enough here. I'm just going to Max Quake into it. Get that special defense boost. Should help against Crest. They're just going to switch Crest out into Feeny. Now I kind of regret not, uh, not Vine Lashing into that slot. Oh well, this is fine. Because I can't imagine Feeny likes to take a... Uh, 
a Vine Lash from Venusaur, but I could be wrong. There's our big turtle. The turtle bros. I love them. And you know, they're just as good as they've been. I'm hoping. Well, do we see Fake Out? No Fake Out. So what is this Incineroar doing? Figgy? Agua? Probably Pinchberry, right? Citrus. Okay, that's also fine. Flare Blitz, that's gonna hurt. That hurt a lot, but Ensign should go down. Yep. That's great. Sun Boosted Flare Blitz still hurts, guys. And they're gonna bring out Metagross, which is actually pretty great for us. Because now I can go for a Heat Wave. Go for a Vine Lash into Feeny. Venusaur is still the fastest thing on the field. They're going to Dynamax or Metagross. Um, they could have Quake into Torkoal this turn, and if so, that's going to be pretty bad for us. They're Dynamaxing Feeny. Interesting. I can't imagine this takes this very well. I'm really surprised to see the Feeny go big here. Oh, they have Bullet Punch. Well, that's really unfortunate. Bullet Punch on, on uh, Metagross is not something I've seen anyone else do. Now they're going to Geyser. Yeah, this this went from really good to absolutely terrible for us all in a matter of one turn. Hopefully it's not policy on Metagross, because that could be really detrimental for us. Okay. Okay. How do we win? I'm not gonna lie, I really like Reggie Eliki here. And just, uh... I really want to set up a Reflect. I don't... I don't know if this does enough. What if we switch to Regirock? I can't Thunder Wave. So I don't... Do I want a Light Screen? Or do I just want to Thunder Cage the Feeny and get some ship? What if we... I want to protect and see what they're going to do. I want to Thunder Cage the Feeny. I want to know how much this does. I want to see how bulky this Feeny is. Holy cow, that does so much. That does so much damage. That's going to take us down to Sash. Just doubled into it. Okay. Hmm. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I don't think we're in a very good position. Having, having Bullet Punch on Metagross was really detrimental for us. And not something I've seen, like I said, anyone else do. It's not something I really anticipated. I think I need to Earth Power the Metagross. How do I how do I deal with this Feeny? That's the problem. I think had I switched out Torkoal last turn, been able to switch it back in and switch over to Sun for this. Because Torkoal could have been able to take that one there. Yeah, this is That's absurd. That's absolutely absurd. I'm pretty sure that crit had to matter. I I may not be entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure that crit mattered. Can someone someone should run the calc for me on that one? Cause 
like obviously it's a steel roller coming off of a metagross and like that's obviously a lot of damage but at the same time it's still a regirock who has a base 200 defense so like i i can't imagine that that uh that didn't matter rocky helmet feeny interesting neutral nature that can't be right Bulky Ensign. Low Sweep is really some good tech. I do like that. Yeah, some of these... Some of these natures ain't making too much sense. And that's... That's a fast press. Really, had we... Had we actually gone for the Vine Lash there on turn one into the crest... I think we would have been in a way better position. Had we had we gone for Vine Lash plus uh, Earth Power into Venu, I mean into uh, Incin. Like granted, this is playing with perfect information, but I think that would have been the correct play. All right, moving right along here, we have Togekiss, Articuno, Landorus, Tapu Fini, Dusclops, and Metagross. So this is probably policy Metagross triggering with Bulldoze from um, from Dusclops. Could also be Earthquake on on Ensign. I mean on Lando. Hmm. So what if we go Trick Room this game? Actually, what if we do this? Then I actually like Reggie Eliki Dragonite up front here with the Sand Duo. I mean the Sun Duo in the back. I like that. Dragonite's gonna be able to basically deal with mostly everything they have going on here. Ice Punch puts in a lot of work. There's and that's that's one thing about this format, thanks to Landorus and the new birds being introduced and the new dragons on top of that. There's a lot there's gonna be a lot more incidental ice coverage. Uh, which like we see here on Dragonite we have um we have in Intimidate, I mean, um, Ice Punch, so... <sighs> so... I think I want to... I think I want to reflect. And I want to Dynamax and go for... Airstream into Lando. Okay, they're staying in. That's kind of good for us, I think. I want Dragonite to be faster than Landorus if this is, in fact, Scarf Lando. So getting this Airstream here could be important. That's a big Dragonite. I see Protect from Togekiss. That's fine. Gonna get up our Reflect. Just gonna go for Earthquake here. This, I mean, this is gonna do a ton to Eliki, but we have a stash for a reason. That's fine. Thank you. Man, 50%, over 50% to Lando, that's great. And the question is, do I want to set up light screen as well? And I'm leaning towards yes. I could also Thunder Cage into Toki Kiss. I think going for light screen here is fine. 
and then air streaming. Yeah, we'll we'll go for the ice punch into the the hailstorm into Togi Kiss this turn. Th that's also just fine. I'm completely fine with that. Eliki has done its job this game. It set up screens. Please earthquake me. Never mind. I get to hold on to it for another turn. No, I don't. Hale's gonna take it out. Hale's gonna take it out. That's fine. Really glad we didn't try to go for a Thunder Cage into Toki Kiss, though. Them having ally switch on it is uh not great for us. More importantly, that bolt that breaks our multi-scale, which could be really important here in front of Toki Kiss. But I'm gonna go ahead and bring out Mr. Torkoal. They're gonna bring out Dusclops. That's also fine. Trigger my policy. Nothing bad will happen, I promise. I'm just gonna click Heat Wave. Now, I want a Worm Wind into the Dust Clops this turn, but if they click Ally Switch, that's really bad for us. Like, if they click Ally Switch or... Um, follow me, that's really bad. So I guess it's just correct to airstream, but I don't feel great about that because if they set up Trick Room, I want Torkoal to be slow. But I also want this uh, Heat Wave to do as much damage as it possibly can. Like, Torkoal's still going to be slow, even at plus one. Yep, trigger the policy now. And thanks thanks to the light screen there, that just does actually no damage. Thanks. <laughs> Man, that does a lot. That does do a lot of damage. So I can Heat Wave again, and I can reasonably go for a Ice Punch into the Togekiss, pick up the KO there, then the single target Heat Wave should do a pretty decent chunk to uh, Dusclops. You can see the Protect from the Togekiss, that means we're not picking up the KO this turn on the Dusclops. Yep. Crit? Nope. That's fine. Trick Room here is fine. So now I can Heat Wave and... Honestly, I'm not really scared of anything that they could do here. Like, what do they, what do they switch in here? They don't really have a good switch. So I can just Ice Punch the Togekiss? Torkoal is still the slowest thing on the field at plus one. Yeah, we just pick up the double KO there. That's hilarious. Torkoal is so bad. So slow. He's such a good turtley boy. I didn't mean it when I said you were bad. That was an accident, I promise. Yeah, this is this is great. Heat wave. And, uh, we'll just go for a Dragon Claw. Like, sure, it's resisted, but I'm also at plus two. Sure, you protected. Good job, buddy. Oh no, my light screen. Going for Hail that one turn to knock out our Eliki was kind of bad. Um, like, ha being able to potentially set up, like, a Thunder Cage or something to take out the Togekiss there would have been a little more ideal. But, you know, um, 
I forgot they hadn't Dynamax this game. This just got a little more interesting. This just got a little more interesting, that's for sure. If we could get a burn off this heat wave, I would love Torkoal forever. Good lord! <laughs> That did so much. Alright, Torkoal, sorry, buddy. You did what you could. That's all we ask. Luckily, we still have Venusaur in the back. But... They can only, they can only take out one of us. And now that we don't have Sun up, Venusaur might be slower. Might be slower than, uh, the Metacross? I actually don't know the answer to that. But, worst case scenario, they can only take out one of us. Sorry, Dragonite. You, you happen to be the one that they wanted to pick on. But, that's, that's ultimately fine. Because now we should get this Earth Power out and pick up the KO. Just like that, we are on the scoreboard for Series 7, people. Let it be known. Let it be known. We are officially on the scoreboard. That was a good game. Like I said, uh, in, in hindsight, going for the Hailstorm there was not correct. Um, I think even had they not clicked ally switch, had we just gone for, um, just gone for another airstream into the Togekiss slot, it would have been fine. Um, because it, ultimately that would have led us to knock out the Landorus anyway, without setting up the weather to take out the Eloki that turn. So then the following turn we can get a Thunder Cage into the Togekiss, do a massive amount of damage to it, and then potentially pick up the KO on it as well. So here we see, last game of the day, we have Whimsicott, Metagross, Zapdos, Incineroar, Salamence, and Coco. I really want to go slow. The problem is, is I don't know how we can accomplish that. I don't know how we can accomplish going slow. What if we go Orangaroo Eliki with Torkoal Regirock in the back? What does this do for us? I actually think this is really good. I think this lines up pretty well against what our opponent is trying to do. Venusaur kind of seems like a liability in the face of Metagross, Zapdos, Incineroar, Salamence. Dragonite doesn't look great in the face of Coco, Salamence. Metagross can have Ice Punch that we saw last game. Whimsicott has Tailwind, possibly Moonblast as well. Um, Incineroar could have Fake Out to break our multi-scale into any of those. Yeah, I, I think this is fine. I think going for a Trick Room is probably our best bet. So we're gonna see Ensign Metagross. Okay. Orangaroo Eliki. Wonder if this is just going to be Intimidate, I mean, uh, Fake Out plus Steel Spike, uh, Fake Out plus, um, Quake. If that's the case, I think Eliki just has to go down. 
we can hope they don't have fake out. But even if it does go down, then we get Trick Room up and we can bring in... Um, oh my lord, I can't think. Regirock. And... Unfortunately, Regirock doesn't have anything that can hit Metagross super effectively. No, we have Fire Punch. We have Fire Punch on Metagross. So then we can switch out the Oranguru, bring in Torkoal, get a Max Flare plus... Oh! So that means they're not knocking out uh, Eliki. Plus, we would have got Reflect up anyway. No, no. Had they faked out into Eliki, they would have... Um, Yeah, this is fine. This is all fine. I know what's going on. I don't know what's going on, but I know what's going on. Nice crit. That definitely mattered, I promise. Thank you, Inner Focus. So now I can click Ally Switch and go for a Thunder Cage into the Ensign. Like, I ideally want Eliki to go down so we can get a free switch in. Yeah, this, this is fine. The question is, does Oranguru bite the dust here as well? Nope, not even close. Not even close. So that being said, we can bring in Regirock here. We do have Fire Punch, that's great. So the question is, is do we want a Dynamax or do we just want a double Fire Punch? Because if we double Fire Punch, we can get the Instruct. We are slower, right? We are not slower than a Rankaroo. That's actually good to know. So it's actually correct here to go for the Max Flare and go ahead and switch into Torkoal. That's really good to note. And hopefully they don't max Quake into that slot again. Cause I I honestly don't know if we're gonna take this Incineroar, uh, this Metagross out. I'm gonna bring out Salamence though. Well, that's Intimidate, but that doesn't work. Torkoal don't care. So this is the second turn of Trick Room, so after this we have two more, so Trick Room should end the same turn our Dynamax ends, if I'm doing my math correctly. Which should be fine. This is gonna do a lot. That didn't do nearly as much as I thought it would. We are in a terrible position. We are in a very, very terrible position now. I honestly expected that to do way more than it did. But this is this is fine, because now we can... Hailstorm into Salamance. And we can Heat Wave here. Heat Wave boosted by Charcoal, boosted by Sun off of off of Torkoal. Granted, they do have two special defense boosts. They're gonna want to draw 
go back into Incineroar, but again, this doesn't matter. Metagross is gonna protect. That's really bad. That's so bad. Man, they have just played me like a book. Yep, yeah, that's unfortunate because now Sun is gone. Heat Wave isn't going to do as much next turn. Hmm. So how do we how do we do this? I can rockfall the incineroar slot. And I can Earth Power the Metagross. I still think Heat Wave would do more damage, though. So, the reason I want to Rock Fall... Okay, this is great. This is actually great. The fact that they're going into Salamence here is huge. Because now we can take out the Incineroar. Uh, when the Metagross comes back in, it doesn't have the boost anymore. It doesn't have the Special Defense boost anymore. Yeah, they fake out the Torkoal, that's also fine. I forgot about that. Forgot they had fake out. But now we should be able to take out the Incineroar. But, they don't have their special defense or their defense boost on... Um, on Metagross when it comes back in. So the question is, is does it have Earthquake? I think the answer is probably yes. The follow-up to that is, can we live in Earthquake? They're also at neutral now. So what if I Ice Punch this dork? And then click Heat Wave. Let's go for it. Hydro Pump! Yep. That's unfortunate. But Red Rock lives. That should take out Salamence. It does. Problem is, is they have spread damage on their Metagross, so even clicking Ally Switch doesn't do anything here. And they have Coco as their last. Yep. Because they can just have Dazzling Gleam on it as well. Man, was not expecting Hydro Pump. I just, I don't see a way we win this one now. Like, they, they just stalled out Trick Room well enough that we weren't able to actually capitalize on it. Hope they somehow miss. Nope. Now Earthquake should take us out. Life Orb Coco. Interesting. Oh, yeah, just Steel Roller. The fact that Metagross gets access to Steel Roller and the fact that we've ran into it twice today is absurd. It's not a move I have seen at all on Metagross. Same with, like, Bullet Punch. 
Like every every Metagross I've seen up to this point is just running Meteor Mash as their steel move. We ran into Bullet Punch and Double Steel Roller today, so uh, not not a great day for for the team. But you know we have we have the rest of the week to make up for it. So really glad we actually get to play some Series Seven on the official ladder now. Uh, so gonna be. It's gonna be fun. This format has been a lot of fun from what I've watched. I know Carlo's been having a blast with it. And overall, just excited to see where it takes us. Um, really anxious to see how it shapes up. And, uh, you know, we have Players Cup 2 uh, events coming up in, I believe, this weekend and two weeks from now, I believe, is the second cut. So. Excited to see how the actual events turn out and what teams can actually be viable. If there's anything spicy going on that people weren't prepared for. So, we'll figure it out when it happens, you know? So, that, that being said, everyone, uh, thank you all very much for watching. If you're new here, we have like 100 videos or something on, on the YouTube channel now. Make sure you go and check something else out as well. Hit that subscribe button. Ring the bell for notifications when new stuff goes live. We're going to have a bunch of Series 7 content coming out in the next next uh, several weeks now. Um, so make sure you check all that out as well. Got the podcast every Monday where we feature a team which then gets played on the ladder. So that's what, uh, that's what we do around here. It's a fun time. I enjoy it. Carl enjoys it. And here we are. So... Leave a comment down below of uh, what you what you want to see in the future, what you like, what you've been playing with, all that good stuff, and leave a like on the video as well. It really does help us all out and makes our videos seen a little more by those who uh, haven't ever seen them before. So, thank you all very much. Have a good one. Peace. Peace.